Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Oh, yeah. Got the applause. Let's go. Winning Cures Everything College Football Big Game Previews for week number 15. It's championship week. I'm Gary. I'm Chris. Play that sweet music. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're going to make this one relatively quick this week. Of course, you can find everything about us over at winningcureseverything.com. Picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Leave some comments. Tell us what you like this week, what you don't like. Uh, we, we're hitting every game because there's only so many. And they're all championship games. So, we're hitting them all. We're just going to kind of run through them really quickly because th- you don't need us to tell you a whole lot about this. We'll give you our opinions on it, and then we'll go from there. But uh, Smack Apparel is a new sponsor on the show. Go to smackapparel.com, S-M-A-C-K apparel.com. Use promo code WIN. You can get 20% off. Anything that's over 40 bucks is going to ship for free. So you can buy a whole bunch of shirts. It doesn't matter. You use that promo code, get 20% off. You still get it shipped for free. It's pretty awesome. I, I have a question. I know we we're going to try to go fast. And I'm always the reason we take too long. You spelled smack. Not that smack or apparel are hard to spell. Do you think smack is harder to spell than apparel? No, I, I just wonder if maybe I don't say it clearly enough sometimes. Oh, okay. I, okay, I think you do, but I hear you all the time. Yeah, and you we hear both me. We, we, we both, we got a yeah, draw. Okay, it, yeah. I, I got, okay, I'm good with that. It just threw me off for a minute. I was like, I know how to spell both of these. If I had to spell one for my child... I think she would need help with apparel better, but you're probably right. I think well, there's only one way to spell apparel. You know what I'm saying when I say even if I like slur the word because I've been drinking, which we haven't, <laughs> which is late. Yeah. But like a pearl, like everybody knows what I'm saying. Yeah. Smack. I, okay, I get it. Yeah. Smack apparel. I just. Now, you, I'm sorry. No, no, tangent, it's all good. It's all good. I, I try and make it as clear as possible. I was just confused everybody. by that. I was like. I, I do it all the time just to make sure that people understand what I'm saying because sometimes it gets late. I mean, we're recording right now. It's almost midnight on a Tuesday. Uh, yeah, I, you know, okay, okay, I try right. to make it clear. So, smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN for 20% off. Win. Anything over 40 bucks. W-I-N. WIN. Yes. W-I-N. Not W-H-E-N. W-I-N. As in winning cures everything. So, use promo code WIN. You get 20% off. Go and check out I our really buddies. Hope that our people don't listen to our show that actually pay for the advertising. <laughs> they they they're gonna send you a cease and desist letter for me to stop. Well, <laughs> like stop, stop talking. talking about our our stuff, man. <laughs> oh, uh, all right. So Tunica, Mississippi, is the South's premier sports gambling destination. They bring you the show every single week. Love every people. single show. Tunica treats us right. They will treat you right. Look, they got awesome steakhouses. They got awesome golf courses. They got awesome concerts that come through town. All sorts of shows, everything else. And they got six incredible sports books. You can find more information about all of that stuff over at tunicatravel.com. Go check them bad boys out. Let's go ahead and fire into this thing. Come on. Game number one, the biggest game of the weekend, I think, right? Yeah, definitely the big well, it's the biggest game because college game day is gonna be there. And it's number what, two versus number four? Okay. Yeah, LSU minus seven and a half against Georgia. It is on at 3 p.m. Central Time, God's time zone, on CBS at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. Total is 54 and a half. Georgia going to be without George Pickens, wide receiver, for the first half because he decided he was going to throw them hands against Georgia Tech. How about, hey, you throw hands with Georgia Tech. It's, it's going to cost you a little time in the SEC nobody championship Nobody's going to throw hands with. Uh, in in the in the those white shirts, those yes, yellow britches. You got that right. You got that right. The yellow jackets, tough to deal with, tough to deal with. But LSU might be a little more tough to deal with. So seven and a half. Like it, this line opened up at what four and a half, five? Yeah, it opened small. Oh, let me get back to my college. And story. everybody jumped on it. Now, That's right? I I, I thought once this line got up there, I thought, man, you know, Georgia's defense really good. You know, I might, uh, I might would hop on Georgia here, but I, I, with without DeAndre Swift being healthy, without yeah, it opened at four, 
Um, and it's now, so that's saying seven, but I know it's seven and a half and eight in other places. Everybody's on LSU. Yes, I sir. think everybody's right. I think they are too. Um, I think LSU is still mad because they got jumped for number one a couple of weeks ago. For no inexplicable reason. And then they come out and they put a molly whopping on Texas A&M last week. We didn't know that we had to flex all of our defensive muscles all year. Yeah. We just figured if you beat the hell out of everybody, it's fine. But then Especially people, with that resume, right? Yeah. With that schedule. And, and then people were like, well, you gave up 30 points to Vanderbilt in week four. We're like, all right. But we scored 60 on them. The, so, so the one stat that Ohio State has is uh, points per game differential. Yeah. And they are outscoring people on average by 38 points. I'm fine with that. And LSU was out before this past game. LSU was outscoring people by like twenty six point six points per game. We we played a I don't close know how game that matters. against Alabama, which really hurts that number. We and a close, a close game, against, game Auburn. against Auburn, which really hurts that number. And then the other part of that is, what do you think a true spread would be Vanderbilt against Rutgers? That's a good question. I think Vandy would probably be favored. Points? No, it wouldn't be that much because Vandy's awful this year. Uh, I mean, I'd probably go maybe anywhere from ten to fourteen points, Vandy, on a neutral. So you take you take that differential away from Ohio State. Now Maryland and Arkansas and Vandy. Vandy scored thirty eight, but what did they have? Like a pick six and something else was crazy was about the, that. It was, like, it was. I mean, we had, we were, we had like sixty sixty two points. Something like with that. Six, it was sixty six thirty eight. Yeah. And and yeah, all the backups are in. Nobody cares. Vanderbilt starts scoring and it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah. It didn't matter. So we didn't beat them by 60. So that kind of stuff shouldn't make a difference. And yet, here we are. And once LSU realized, oh, okay. We're we're supposed to prove stuff instead of just winning games and kind of kicking the crap out of everybody. Yeah. So instead, okay, Texas A&M's coming to town. Cool. Georgia beat them by six at home last week. Well, we're going to beat them 50 to seven and hold them to less than 200 yards. Yeah. And And, and and hold them to nothing. Yeah, gave, gave up less than 200 yards right. of total offense. And that's nuts. I think we're going to kill Georgia. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I, I, this and, LSU and team it, appears to be on a mission. This could be bravado. This could just be being really chesty. I, I, I'm i just at a point where I feel like, A, I'm playing with house money because I've never had my team be this good before in my life. Um, So I feel like, I mean, you know. Even, you don't think 2011 was this good? Close. To I this think team. this is the not close to this team. I agree. I think this is the best LSU team in my lifetime. Uh, I would say this team might be better than the the two thousand one or two thousand three national title team. Oh yeah. No, they might not win the national title, but they're better than them. Yeah, I think I agree. They're absolutely better than them. I agree. I so. mean, it's it's crazy. Uh, I do think LSU is on a mission right now. I think they will. I, I think they'll dominate this game. I, I mean, w- without DeAndre Swift at full health, Lawrence Cager's out. Uh, you got the guy on defense that's going to miss whatever. Yeah. Uh, they, like, George is in a bad way right now. They need this game. And I, then X's and O's wise, I think LSU is going to get out early and get out often. We've done it in every game so far. Yeah. And I believe that Kirby Smart can't come from behind. Yeah. I think if we get up by 14, the ball game is over. We yeah. might not win by 14, but I don't believe that there's any time that we're really in danger of losing the game. I think I could agree. I think I could agree. I mean, in the Alabama and the Auburn game, both those games were close at the end, but we never trailed in either game, and we controlled the game at all times. The majority of the game, we were up by two scores or more. And it was just one of those things where the other team got the ball last and scored to make it a one-score game. Yeah, that's all right. So picks, we're both taking LSU minus seven and a half here. Absolutely, uh, I I agree with that. I think I think they demolish them. Next game up, the Friday night game. Utah is a six and a half point favorite over Oregon. The total is forty seven. Seven p.m. on ABC on Friday. It's at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara, California. Utah is the only Pac twelve team with a shot to get into the playoff. And I will tell you this, ESPN. ABC, whatever, is sending their number one team to this game. Now, 
they have Oklahoma and Baylor the next day at 11 a.m. Now, the obviously, there are logistical issues. you got to have Herb Street at the SEC championship game. So that, that would not have worked. I get that. But the fact that those two are at the Friday night game, which think about how crazy that schedule is. Herb Street calling a game in Santa Clara, California, has to fly overnight to get to Atlanta for the SEC championship game. And then he gets done there, watches the SEC championship game, and they will immediately fly him on a private jet to Indianapolis for the Big Ten title game. You think he'll night. actually stay and watch the, the SEC title game? I think he'll watch like at least a half. I think he'll watch it from the plane. Uh, no, no, no. He has said he's he's going to sit and watch the entire game. That's insane. It's, he hadn't really gotten to watch LSU this year. Well, so, so, then, so then he flies to Indianapolis, and he's doing a live hit for – uh, SVP's Sports yeah. Center that night from Indianapolis. That man, in, in and like then a, and then he gets up and flies to Bristol, Connecticut the next morning for the selection show. That's crazy. He's taking a page out of Pat McAfee's book. Oh, but McAfee does this every week. Yeah, but Pat's Pat's kind of insane. Hundred <laughs> percent. He's not kind of. And and the difference is is Pat gets to be insane. Herb Street has to be like. Calling, hey, calling the game, which Pat calls games on Thursday night. Yeah. But basically, he's going to call two games in two days. And then he has to be the biggest grown up in the room. I think he has the most power yes. in any single person in all of sports. Because I think the things that he says on television matter more than anything else. He made a statement about Nebraska having a chance to be good this year. That was that was it. He'd pick them to win national championship. He said he thought they would be really good this year, much improved from last year. And they had the fourth or fifth best odds to win the national championship. I think that was solely because people heard Kirk Herbstreet say something on national TV. I could believe it. He he is going to say things on TV that are important for people to hear. And he's going to do it with that much travel. That's insane. Yeah, I, I agree. It's That's pretty nuts. In, no, when no is the next the time week. he has to go back on TV? Can he take like two weeks off? Because they're not calling one of these no, low-level ball games. I think he's good for like a week. Uh, you, you got two weeks. Oh, well, he, game day will do the, the Army, Army Navy, Navy game. The next so he, Saturday. So he won't have to, but he don't have to call the game. CBS will have the game. Yeah, CBS has so the he game. Just he's just doing has, game day. He just has to go do game day. No game to call. And he's not going to call some low-level bowl game after that. So he's going to have a couple of weeks of showing up and talking on ESPN, but not really having to. He might do, I think they did the Las Vegas Bowl last year. Really? I think so. I don't remember that. Yeah, I think I think we're going way Vegas too long on this. And that's that is what it is. Again. Either way, Oregon, Utah, Utah, six and a half point favorite. Uh, look, I've been on Utah all year. We're going to go opposite here. I we think. are going to go opposite here. Uh, you think Utah wins the game? No. You I've think Oregon on, wins the game? Before okay. the season started, we had this as our matchup. Yeah. And I had Utah. Or I had Oregon. You had Utah. I have, and I've not, still I'm got not, Utah. I have no reason to change because one team lost one extra game. I I can understand that because Utah didn't play Auburn. If Utah had played Auburn, then they might have the same record. That's true. I, Utah looks dominant to me. They got Zach Moss. That's fine. They got Tyler Huntley. That's great. That, that defense is That's awesome. outstanding. I Against think really that they are going to dominate this game. defense is really good. Yeah. Have they played a top 50 offense in the country? I'm sure. that Yeah, they, they played Washington State. Is Washington State a top 50 offense? Yes. I guess they are. They're just that bad <laughs> on defense. Washington is actually a top 50 offense. That surprises me because uh, in in Oregon and Utah both beat them. They weren't really you know. good. So no, they weren't great. They were a five loss team. But Washington State, obviously, they're always yeah. You're be, you're, yeah. you're right on that. I um, I forgot about that. Uh, UCLA, I believe they can't they can't be a top fifty. All. They had games that they scored fifty, sixty. Uh, had, yeah, yeah, no, 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 you're right. They scored like thirteen. Yeah. So it, it, no, Utah has not played a ton of really good offenses, but they played one. They have been dominant. Played one. They played two. Washington and Washington State. Washington. That's a top fifty offense is not a good offense. It's just top fifty. Right. That's a, but that's what you asked. I'm with you. I understand where you're coming from. So you you like Oregon here. You think they're going to be able to get this done? 
I'm going the opposite way. I think Utah is dominant. I think they are on a mission right now. Utah is the uh, the team. Cover? Yeah, I think I think Utah covers. I think they win by by double digits. Okay. So I I Utah was in this spot last year, and and they lost the game to Washington. Um, I think them being there last year helps them out this year. Okay. I mean, it's a little more pressure this season because you still got the playoff thing hovering, but. Yeah, I think Utah. I think Utah kind of dominates this game. I think they're a better team than Oregon, uh, and obviously you think you think differently. I think different. I mean, I just I've thought one way the entire year. I don't know why I would change this week. No, that makes sense. And my logic hasn't changed. I haven't seen anything on the field. They're killing everybody they play. That's awesome. I'm not knocking, and I don't think they're a bad football team. I no, think no, they I'm played with... a good offense, and I think the quarterback they're about to go up against is the best quarterback they've played all year. And I think this offense overall is the best offense they've played all year. Yeah, you might be right. You might if be right. If they shut this team down, then 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 I'll then I'll agree that they've done something. Okay, we can get that. Next game up, and we're gonna try and get through these relatively I quickly. Apologize. I'm no, no, it's it ain't you. It's it's both of us. We uh we enjoy talking. Yeah, that's what okay. we do. So we want to make sure the show is entertaining. That's what we do. Baylor and Oklahoma. Oklahoma an eight and a half point favorite. Sixty three and a half is the total. It's eleven a.m. on ABC at AT and T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. This is a rematch from earlier in the season. Oklahoma won 34 to 31 in Waco. Let's go on and give picks. I know you're going Baylor. I am. I'm going to go Oklahoma here. I think Oklahoma got a little bit right last week. And what Oklahoma did not have in that first matchup was CeeDee Lamb. Okay. That so guy is got, a difference maker. They got their best offensive player, and Baylor got their Baylor best, got defensive, their best defensive player. player. Yeah. I think that's a wash. I like Baylor. I think Baylor's going to win the game outright. I, I think I Oklahoma a, wins a, by 10. I get a nine-point head start. Yeah. I, take it. I think Oklahoma wins by 10 points here. I, or maybe more. They may win by two touchdowns. Wow. Uh, that would I, shock me. I think that, that Oklahoma – This is a big spot for Baylor. A lot of pressure here. Nobody on this team has been in this situation before. I'd say, I, that's where we're different. I don't think there's any pressure here because you're almost a double-digit dog. Nobody expecting you to win this game. I, I, look, I will say this: the coaching Kershaw's matchup in this, the coaching matchup here is oh, these might awesome. Be, these are these are two of the best coaches in all of football, not college yes. football, all of football, all of football. Uh, there's NFL it, teams that want both of these. Guys. Be, yeah, if they want to play on Sundays, they both could call almost I don't know twenty of the thirty two conferences teams and just say I want that job, and that job would open up for them. Yeah. You think, you think Carolina might be going for Matt Rule? I don't. Care. I want to see him. I like what he's doing at Baylor, and I don't want to crap on Baylor because I like, I like what he's doing there. I want to see him in the NFL because I think he's that level good. I think he is. I'd too. love him to be on my Browns. I, I, I just think Cleveland's going to screw it up. So don't go there, and <laughs> you can go there, and maybe it's, they can stop screwing things up, but. I mean, I just want him to go somewhere where he's going to be stable and have an opportunity. Because remember, year one, he won nothing. He, yeah. It's going to take a little bit to build in the NFL. And it's not like in college where you can just walk out in the state of Texas and go grab a shitload of kids. Yeah, that's true. You that is true. You got to draft and you got a free agent. And you got to do all those things, too. Let's uh, let's move on. Next game, Cincinnati at Memphis. Memphis, a nine-and-a-half point favorite. The total is 57 and a half which is less than Oklahoma Baylor. Kind of surprising here. 2.30 p.m. on ABC. It's at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis. Another rematch from last week. You were actually at the game last week. Memphis Memphis won 34-24. to 24. Uh, Look, this seems like a lot of points. Nine and a half. Like, I, I think Memphis wins the game. I don't think that they win by nine and a half, so I'm going to take Cincy to cover, um, and I will take Memphis to win. But with all the stuff going around with Norvell and whatnot, it wouldn't surprise me one way or another. I've seen this play out before. Uh, I don't like when it does, but I do think Memphis is the more talented team. I think so, too. And they are significantly more explosive. Yes. If they can put the clamps down on Cincinnati's running game, which they really weren't able to do in the first game, uh, Cincy's got such bigger dudes, yeah. man. This is, this, is a, this is a brute force against speed. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about big dudes on both trenches that can dominate the line of scrimmage. And since he was able to 
dictate the way that the game was played for the majority of the game in but the big, first one. Big plays killed them. Yeah. Big plays killed them, and, the, and that's what Memphis has got to hope for again. I like Cincinnati to cover. I think if I've got to make a pick, I'm going to pick Cincinnati to win um, just because I think it's really hard to beat two teams twice. At least good teams twice. Yeah, yeah. I think – yes, I think it's hard to beat good teams two times. Yeah. And you might be right. I'm going to take Memphis to win it. That, and we I, both and like Cincinnati to cover. And, I, and we talk about this in our gambling picks too. Mike Norvell is, is spending a lot of time talking to other athletic directors. Right now. That yeah. is not that is not something that his agent is doing. He is involved in these conversations. Luke Fickle is involved in coaching up this game. Yeah, you're right. You are so right. Uh, next game up, last of the big games. Um, and then we'll do our interesting matchup recap. Uh, uh, Rapid fire. Wisconsin, Ohio State, it is sitting at 15 and a half right now. Total is 56 and a half at 7 p.m. on Fox, Indianapolis, Indiana. Another rematch. The Buckeyes won 38 to 7 in Columbus earlier this year. I think it's I think it's a blowout again. I, I think the what you had in Columbus was Ohio State had so many more athletes. And the weather was exactly what Wisconsin would have wanted back then. And now you've got them in a dome. And you've got all those athletes and all that speed on turf. This is not where Wisconsin would want to play this game. Wisconsin would have a chance in the snow and in the rain with it 15 I degrees I do believe, outside. and I've said this before, four years, the Big Ten Championship game should be played at Soldier Field. I like that idea. I have I have said that forever. If there is ever a we need an outdoor on grass historical venue, the Big Ten should not be played indoors on turf. Not not in Indianapolis, Indiana. I think it should be. I I, I like Chicago. And I'm gonna I'm gonna stand by that. Not because it helps one team or another. That's just Big Ten football. Yeah, that's I agree. Big Ten. All of your big programs play outdoors on grass. Yeah, in the cold. Yeah, they all do. That's where this game should be played, by the way. I understand Justin Fields has got some injury stuff. I get that. They're going to shoot him up with whatever they need to. He will play. They are not. They didn't run him against Michigan. They didn't have to. I think it'll be the same thing here. J.K. Dobbins ain't hurt. Those wide receivers ain't hurt. That defense is fine. Chase Young was, was blocked, for the most part, against Michigan. Unless Wisconsin has figured out something, Chase Young is a better athlete than any of those offensive linemen. Uh, yes, that's a true statement, but it's not by a lot. Man, that, that offensive line is really good. Oh, they're definitely good. I, but I, they could not stop him in the first game. Yeah, I get it. Well, that first game, I'm not, I'm not taking anything from the first game. I think Ohio State wins a game. I got to make a pick. I pick Wisconsin to cover. Um Yes, it's going to be on turf and and whatever. I think Ohio. I think I thought this when Wisconsin played Ohio State the first time. I think Wisconsin can control the line of scrimmage. I think Wisconsin can run the football, and if they are smart, they will hold the ball for forty minutes. I think it's almost impossible to stop explosive offenses in college football today, and Ohio State is one of those. And the way that you do it is yeah, you the, don't give them the ball. You don't play the, defense. The best defense is to don't play defense. Yeah. That's just it. They didn't do that in the first game. I think with it being maybe indoors or whatever, they can they can get their blocks just as easy as they can without them. Uh, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Ohio State's really good, yes. but they're not unbeatable. I watched a mediocre Penn State team – Put up points against them with their backup quarterback, by the way. Yeah. I watched a good, not great, Michigan offense score, what, 24 on them? 27. And it, and 27. They, and, they could have scored more. Should have scored, scored more. more. Yeah. They got they got too far behind too early because of mistakes. But they weren't offensive mistakes. No. And, and it's just one of those things where they move the football on them at will. That's not a great offense. That's a good offense. Yeah. I think Wisconsin's offense is better than Michigan's. I think – they can control the line of scrimmage. I think they can score um, and just keep it close. Okay. Okay. And so you think Wisconsin covers? Off the field. 
You think Wisconsin covers and Ohio State wins the game? 25.05 is our time here. It's time for rapid fire. Virginia Clemson. Clemson a 28.5 point favorite. 6.30 p.m. on ABC. It's in Charlotte. Clemson is feeling... You pick all these? Yeah, we can give picks. I'm not going to keep up with them on the That's on the spreadsheet. Okay. Uh, I think Virginia keeps it close. Obviously, I think Clemson wins. Yeah, uh, not close. I think I think Virginia keeps it within the spread. They cover. I think they cover. Twenty eight and a half. I I would take Virginia. Yeah, let's roll. Um, there's nothing really to talk about there, is there? Nope. All right, Louisiana at App State. App State a six and a half point favorite at home. They won by ten at Louisiana earlier in the year. Held this vaunted Louisiana offense to only seven points at home. It's 11 a.m. on ESPN. If you want to watch a good football game, this, this is a good one to watch. This is going to be a fun game to watch. Um, Louisiana has, I mean, they're 10-2 and two this year. App is 11-1. and one. These are two of the better group of five teams Absolutely. out there. Absolutely. Billy Napier is the coach for Louisiana. He will likely be coaching somewhere else next year at a much bigger job. Eli Drinkwitz, the head coach at App State, he's only been the coach there for one season. His name is up for a lot of big jobs as well. Uh, yeah, we could possibly see him at Missouri, maybe a couple other spots. Uh, or he may just... State at App State, but yeah. if you get called for a big job, I mean he's making eight hundred thousand at App State. I was just about to say the, yeah. the difference between Memphis coach at Group of Five and App State coach at Group of Five, the money is yeah. just he he's making eight hundred thousand at App State. Yeah, Norvell's now they will make, they will probably Norvell's making three point what? Well, two point seven three, but they could easily bump yeah. him to three and a half yeah, or something easily. like that. That that's a far cry from eight hundred grand. I mean, they, they could they could more than triple his salary, yeah. and and they still wouldn't be paying what their current coaches pay. <laughs> so it's, you know. yeah, it's just really hard to hang on to somebody when you don't have that kind of budget. You got that right. So and it, they've gotten too good, so they're never going to get those couple million dollar checks to go uh, pay for wins. Yeah, you got that right. That's the problem. You got that right. I I, I like App State here. I think they're just the more experienced team. They're like I love Billy Napier and I love what Louisiana is doing. This is only year two of what they're doing. Um, I like App State here. I, I think, think that they would cover. I think I'm going to take Louisiana. I, I take I, Napier. I can understand. He's fun to root for, man. That is a fun I like, football I team. I like this game, and I just figured whoever I'm getting head start with. That makes sense. Hawaii at Boise State. Boise State, a 13 and a half point favorite. This is 3 p.m. on ESPN. We got some good games at 3. I don't know. Like, we got Memphis, Cincinnati at 2.30. I'm not going to to watch a second of it, but that's fine. Yeah, it makes sense. Man, you got a couple of TVs. No, not, I'm not doing it. <laughs> not when LSU's on. I'm watching by myself one TV. Makes sense. Makes phone, sense. Phone off. Hawaii and Boise State. Hawaii is 9-4 and four on the season. Boise State is 11-1. and one. We saw this game before. Boise won 59-37. to 37. It was on the blue turf then. It's on the blue turf now. Uh, Boise needs to make a statement. If they, if, if they can get Cincinnati to beat Memphis and Boise blows out Hawaii, there is a chance that Boise can get the New Year's Six spot. I think Brian Harson and that bunch try and do that here. Uh, Hawaii is good. They are fun. They have no defense to speak of. The offense can score with anybody. But. Boise's defense was able to slow them down just enough. And, yeah. I mean, Boise put up almost 60 on them last time. If yeah. we can get another 60-40 to 40 game like you and I talked about, that'd be a lot of fun. Yep. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to take Boise in this spot. Um, would you do the same? You want to take Hawaii, don't you? I do want to take Hawaii. Nick Rolovich is love, a lot of fun to root for, I love man. their I, Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. We're making picks. I'm going to do it. So, I'll go on, roll them with Hawaii. Hawaii. That's fine. Uh, we got two more smaller, smaller things here. CBS Sports Network has got UAB at FAU. FAU is a seven to seven and a half point favorite, depending on what book you're using. Uh, Lane Kiffin, Bill Clark, both. Lane Kiffin is much more deep in uh, conversations to coach at other teams. Nobody has uh, brought Bill Clark's name up yet. I've seen it with several things or several different searches. Nobody's called him actually. I mean, he's on people's list. Yeah, he's on the list. I don't know that he's had people fly to Birmingham. I mean, we'll see. Uh, UAB, very fortunate to deal with. It was kind of what Minnesota did early in the season where they got to play a lot of backup quarterbacks and all that. UAB got to play teams at the right time this season. They are really they playing a ton of underclassmen. They are not super experienced, but they do have a winning culture there. Bill Clark has established what that program is going to be. I mean, they're 9-3 and three again. FAU is 9-3 and three again. Um, I like FAU here. 
just from a talent perspective alone. I, I mean, we'll see. I'm, I'm going to take FAU minus 7.5 on this one. We've been fighting dragons. Yeah, going with the Blazers. That's, I, I figured you would. You like Bill Clark. I, I do. I, I understand mean, it. I completely understand it. A little bit of an understatement, but yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Last game, 11 a.m. on ESPN2. Miami of Ohio at Central Michigan. This is the MAC championship game. Central Michigan, Jim McElwain, that bunch, yeah. they have been rolling. Yes. Um, they won, what, one game last year? And they're sitting at 7-5 seven and seven and five right now, 7-4. and four. Does eight he probably this into it? No, they're 8-4. and four. Power 5 job, or is he, is he done and happy? I think that he ends up getting the Colorado State job back, which I know is kind of crazy. But Colorado State is a bigger job than Central Michigan is. It is, and that's, that's fine. And he's comfortable in Colorado no, State. No, that's fine. I mean, he, he I mean won. that would be the equivalency of Willie Taggart getting the South Florida job back, right? Basically, yeah. A South Florida job's probably a lot better than a Colorado State job nationally. Yes, but I will say this. Colorado State throws a lot of money at their, their football program. It, it, South Florida has issues with, like, they don't have Donors, facilities. Losers, they don't yeah. have all, I mean, it's just, a, they don't have an on-campus stadium. They yeah, don't have all this different stuff. Colorado State's facilities are... Top notch for Group of Five, man. They they think that they are the next Boise State. Like they yeah. really believe in they what they're doing. Gotta win some games, and and they have not been able to do that with Mike Bobo. So, uh, I don't think it, Bobo hadn't been fired yet. No, but it I think it's coming. Okay. So it, we'll we'll see what happens there. But all it, reading the tea leaves, Bobo's out. So, uh, but that has nothing to do with this game. Central Michigan has been gangbusters in the MAC this year. Sorry, but. Miami of Ohio has looked really, really good. Miami of Ohio's record would be better, and they're they're seven and five, but they only got two losses in the MAC. Central Michigan, same thing. I, Miami of Ohio has played uh, a little tougher competition. People love Central Michigan right now. It's a seven point spread. I think all of that is because Miami of Ohio went to Ball State last week when they already had their division wrapped up and everything. They played some backups. They they tried a few things out. Whatever. Ball State got the win by two touchdowns. Central Michigan is on a three-game winning streak. I like Miami of uh, Ohio here, plus the seven. I think they win the game. Give me the University of Miami. Like it. So we're both rolling the same thing. Both rolling the same thing. All right, that's going to wrap it up. College football big game previews for week 15. That's the last one. We're going to be doing bowl games. We're going to be doing uh, all the playoff predictions, all the playoff uh, talk, whatnot. But uh, this has been a lot of fun. The previews this year have been awesome. Thanks to you guys. We appreciate all of you for sticking around with us all season. It's been a lot of fun. Stick with us. Make sure you hit subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Hit that like button on the video. Comment in. Tell us what you think and what you want us to cover. We're going to be talking a bunch of other sports after the football season. Obviously, we talk all the NFL stuff as well. Uh, but we do appreciate the support from you guys for hanging out with us all season long. This was our fourth year. Next year is the Big Five. We can't wait for it. Of course, we got a lot of stuff to get to between now and then, recruiting and, and everything else, all of our predictions, everything else. So, uh, we love you guys. Go check out tunicatravel.com. Go check out smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN to get 20% off. And go check out winningcureseverything.com. If you haven't already, enter the picks contest. Go to football. Uh, go to winningcureseverything.com. Go to the football picks contest right there. Put your name, your email in, pick 10 games against the spread. You'll win a prize from Tunica, Mississippi. I think that's it. Anything else we need to cover? That's it. I think that's it. We'll see you all again next week. Thanks, guys. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.